You're given the scenario of six different friends all going to a concert. They all arrive at different times, but they're going to meet up inside the venue. And you're trying to figure out how far to the end to getting into the concert are each of them. Where are they placed in, in line? Um, and if you look at this, nothing is, has the same denominator. So you can look and see three quarters and one half. Those are even two thirds. Those are benchmark fractions. We understand that we can say, oh, you are three quarters of the way through, whereas Andrea is only halfway through. So you are closer to the end than Andrea is. And two thirds is the 66.6 .6 or 67%. So it's in between half and three quarters. So you would know Ethan fell in between um, Andrea and you. But, but what about the rest of them? Uh, you could do some practical understanding. Oh, four fifths is close to a whole, seven eighths is close to a whole. So these guys are gonna be closer to the end. Whereas Drake, he's three sevenths. Well, half of seven is three and a half. And three is less than that. So Drake is less than half of the way through. So we can kind of practically understand that Drake is the furthest back, but who's the closest to the end? And how do we prove it? So we do have the option of creating equivalent fractions where each of these fractions has the same denominator and then compare your numerators. But when you're working with a five and an eight and a seven and a three, there's nothing that really jumps out as an easy lowest common denominator. So, since that might not be the most practical option, unless you're trying to maybe figure out um, just a couple of them, how do we make sure that we know each one of these fractions real tangible value, or at least a calculable value, so that we can say definitively, oh, this is the smallest, this is the next biggest, and this, and this, and this, without having to do all of the work of equivalent fractions. Well, that's where a calculator comes into play. So it's saying you are three out of four. The fraction bar means division. So if you took and put three in, hit division, and by four, you would get the decimal value of 0.75, okay? That is how much of a whole of 100% three-fourths is. Then for one half, well, one divided by two is 0.5. Four divided by five, four, is eight tenths of five, so 0.8. So I know that Bart is just a little bit above you. Then with Camden, I'll need a calculator for that. That's, uh, I should have had that one ready to go. Oh, there we go. Seven divided by eight is 0.875. And then Drake is three divided by seven, which rounds up to point four, three, and then Ethan, since two thirds is a benchmark value, it's six, six, well actually we'll round up to six, seven. Okay, so now I have a concrete value that is easier for me to compare so that I can take these and put them in order from least to greatest for the question that asks, put these different people in line on the number line. So the person who is the furthest away from the end is Drake because he is only 43% of the way there because these are easy to convert to percentages. So my answer would be he's furthest away, he's got the smallest value at 0.43. And so our order would be Drake, is in line and then Andrea is ahead of them and then we have Ethan, you, Bart, and Camden. Okay so Camden we know is getting there because he's the closest to 100% at 0.875 or even rounding it to 0.88. So the converting a fraction into its decimal value is a really good way of being able to compare fractions and being able to say definitively, hey, here's proof that this fraction is greater than that fraction.